This video is going to be a bit different than a normal video. I've got a lot of projects that just need to sit in that incubator just a little bit longer so that they can be perfect. But something that you all have asked for for a long time is a tour of the room. A tour of where I do my business and I turn it into dice and terrain and whatnot. So I figured this is a good time to do it. A time where I can spend the extra time getting my projects to a stage that I'm comfortable showing. So. We've got our desk here. I'm going to only be there briefly because I want to show you my side desk. This is where current projects and my 3D printers go. I've got an Ender 3, which largely focuses on terrain, and an Elegoo Mars for resin prints and details, like these dice that I'm using that look like small little cheese cubes. I've been working on making custom dice for a while, but I've run into a lot of problems, which you'll see in the future video. I've got blackout curtains so that my light is consistent now, and some custom figures, which also is in an upcoming video, still not working great. Now, one thing that you all suggested from my recent dice box video is to sand this little guy down. You can see... I did that, and you just can't see the gold like I was really hoping to in the groove, so I think this project's just gonna have to sit for a while. I do all my editing over here on this glass desk. I have an electronics computer, and I have gold keys so that I can type faster, because of course I wanted gold keys. Now you might think this is from my wife, but no, it's from my best friend in college. He made this, and I can't bring myself to throw this mouse pad away. I think it's just fantastic. I use an MXL microphone, which is connected to a Focusrite sound board so that I can get a nice clear crisp quality voice though you know if I had a better voice that might suit things better I've got all of my pre-painted or fully painted figures over here on the right side one of my favorite sets is I bought one of the boxes of 36 packs of the demons from the descent into Avernus absolutely love it my other shelf over here has all of my molds and resins that I use. The top shelf has my vacuum chamber as well as some of my older molds. This one has a lot of my resins, extra silicones, dump molds, failed projects. I also have a ton of different dyes and ideas for future projects and extra silicone, my pipettes, and my sanding stuff and my shop towels. And then my pressure pot doesn't really have a good spot so I set it on the floor next to a secret project. I also have a bunch of little mini terrain pieces like desks and graveyard pieces as well as some other figures from the Game of Thrones board game or the Lord of the Rings ones that I converted. Now when my group comes over we play on the dinner table and my wife makes me put a blanket down so they don't scratch it. Behind my DM screen I use a rocket book so that I can erase my pen markings and we use a one inch tile system which is my battle mat. I got this at Home Depot and I think it looks great and you can set terrain on it without worrying about it falling over and it's super portable. I have a spot for trees, extra tiles, all my brick things and then this is where everybody sits and plays and you can dress it up real nice real easily. I have my reference books on the side of me for where we're playing as well as extra terrain like my ice walls, my spell effects that I like to use and I've got two boxes that I just always leave out of all my unpainted minis. This is a lot and I just don't want to put it on shelves. I want to show you a couple neat things before we move on to dice. These are Final Fantasy Tactics figures that Bartek sent me as a fan. I think they're awesome looking and I just wanted to show them off. This was a secret project, quote unquote, that I was working on for a while. These are Pokeball molds, and I was pouring my excess resin in them for a long time, and I was going to make this rainbow Pokeball, but I just don't think that the colors actually look all that good, so I eventually abandoned that project and started doing other things with the resin. I think that red was too muted, I was going to make a regular Pokeball and show that this is a great way to use your dump stuff, but it wasn't. Now this is something that I think that you will be excited for. This is around... 2,000 Dice Goblin stickers because I'm planning on being able to sell or give some of these away as people say, hey, I want some of these. Be looking for them because they will be coming up on a store very soon as well as hopefully maybe some other merchandise as I think that would be a great way to be able to give you things that you would like for supporting Dice Goblin and this channel, which by the way, I thank you for. Now, when the channel started getting bigger, I started saving my failed dice, so I have some old bard dice. This is actually a blue and yellow set that looks green, which I thought was kind of cool to save. This is a bubble set from that same Sophie and Toffee dice mold that really didn't work out. This is kind of a vomity yellow-green color that I experimented with, didn't like it. Another part of the bard dice that just didn't work out. This is a red and black color, which kind of turned into a poopy brown, not exactly great. This is actually just all brown with a little bit of glitter, but it turned out black. I kept it, but I never really wanted to finish it. These are the ones that I experimented with with only pressure casting. This was one of the original ones from my swirling glitter dice that I kept. Don't really know why, I don't think I'll ever finish it. 
This was my first UV dice. It's not really a failure, I just don't know what to do with it. And this was my first pressure casted sharp edge dice. And this is just a random half of a dice, so cool, those exist. As well as my failed black and gold dice goblin box. Maybe I'll just cover the whole top in gold foil and call it a true black and gold box. Doesn't have to be dice goblin, still might look cool. This is my normal dice tray that I use during normal D&D games. I have all the dice that I use in a regular session. I have some die hard dice, I have some easy roller dice, I have some D&D wow dice, I have some hacks tech dice, and I have some of my own dice that I've made. I like to keep the druid ones there. I keep this silver and blue set there, not because I particularly like silver or blue, but because I have never not rolled like an 18, 19, or 20, and sometimes you just gotta give in to the good sets, even if they're not your aesthetic. I keep the druid sets and I keep a couple of barred ones around Around for inspiration and this is my whole dice collection laid out on my working table it's a lot <laughs> it's it's a real lot and as I set it all out I was a little bit ashamed but also very very proud I know some of you are thinking this is way too much and some other of you are thinking that this is not nearly enough and you're unimpressed and I don't know which one of you I'm going to disappoint more, but either way, I'm glad I can disappoint some people. So I wanna show you some of my standouts. This is probably my singular most favorite die, because I'm not gonna say dice, because people yell at me in the comments if I say one is a dice, but it's my favorite die, and it's my swirly glitter gold and silver die. It's awesome, but I always have a place in my heart for my Tesseract die. It is amazing. It's the first one that kind of propelled the channel into something that I could possibly think about doing full time, so I love it. I think that the rest of the Infinity Stone ones did not get as much attention as I thought they would, but that's okay. I like the Mana Potion one a lot, I think it stands out very well, and I think the Potion of Healing is very popular amongst people. And then this is my very first die set that I ever created, my gold ones. I don't think they're particularly pretty, now, but you know what, I was very proud of them and it kind of kicked everything off. I do want to show you this one set, which actually started the class series, which I will get back to. This was going to be made for a Fey Warlock, but it didn't really turn out like I wanted, so I ended up putting flowers in it and it turned into the Druid dice. I've got my spooky dice over here, my giant copper die, I've got my original set, I've got all my health potions, some of my chocolate dice, a few of my kind of stained glass looking dice, my pride dice and my cloud dice, those ones are very matte used by just spraying some matte varnish on them. As I said, I've got my Infinity Stone dice, which, again, I thought were really good, but, you know, uh, they just kind of like the Tesseract ones. Got my Bard ones, the rest of my Druid ones, the other ones I gave away, some of my random ones, and my very first set of dice that I ever purchased. This was for a Paladin, and I still play that Paladin sometimes today. I've got some Easy Roller dice, again, all the dice that I showed you that I use on a daily basis. I've got a collection of D&D WoW, Hackstech, and some Die Hard dice. I've got some really cool swirly ones from the Bell Cookie sets. I still am glad to see those. Die Hard dice, still probably my favorite dice to receive by surprise from their owner sometimes. He just likes to send me stuff and I'm never gonna complain about that. I've got some game science dice and some jumbo dice in the background, as well as these odd ones with the dragon head on them. Not really sure where they're from. If you do know, let me know. I've got some spin down D20s from Magic the Gathering. I like those. I've also got some very teeny dice from a uh, Hobbit's Handy Haversack on Amazon. That's a regular dice for size comparison. This is one that somebody made that's a gemstone that's got my initials on it, as well as all my just random D6s. These are from the original Lord of the Rings board game. They've got the Leaves of Lorien and the Eye of Sauron on the ones place, so god I love those D6s. I'll never lose those. And just some random one-off sets. The little pink blue and gold ones from one of my favorite wizard characters, and then the silver and purple are ones from a warlock that I never got to play. This is the pile of dice that I showed you before that are all failures, as well as all my dice bags that aren't just random black dice bags. All of these are pretty much from Easy Roller because they make great ones and I haven't needed other ones since I got them. They stand up on their own and they're great. I just wanted to pay homage one more time to this specific dice set. It, you probably don't think about it much but I do. It is one dice set that literally changed my life. It's the one that got people looking at the channel and got it to where I could possibly be thinking about doing this thing as a full-time thing sometime. So truly, from the bottom of my heart, know that I love and appreciate 
every single one of you. You have changed my life and it's just crazy. I have some upcoming custom dice videos out of resin like this that I want to show you. I just need a little bit more time to get the process down right. I don't want to give you false info. So thank you for watching this video in the meantime this week. I've got some new ones coming up next week. If you didn't like this video style, that's totally okay. We'll be back to the normal stuff next week. I just wanted to say thank you again. I hope that you have a fantastic day tomorrow. And I'm going to end this video before I get in trouble for people saying I stretch it to 10 minutes. So have a great day.